Good evening. If you've ever been window shopping, then you know that diamonds are pretty hard to come by. And you also probably know that diamonds themselves are just about the hardest things in the world, which is a pretty apt description of some of the central characters in our play tonight. I'll be back in just a moment and tell you more about them. The characters tonight are a motley gang, and they live in a little faraway colony somewhere between Singapore and Hong Kong. Now, into their lives comes a diamond wristwatch, which creates a certain amount of havoc and has some exciting and unpredictable consequences, which we think will keep you right on the edge of your seats till the final twist unfolds itself. The title of our play, The Fast Buck. to the well once more, but you'll be caught out one of these days. You've got your bit, haven't you? Yes. Then shut up. Small profits, quick returns, that's me. Never turn down the chance of a fast buck and let the mugs do the worrying. I say. Mr. Slaughterly. Yes? Could I have a word with you, privately? Well, of course, sit down. Harry, soft drink for the lady, or would you like something stronger, my dear? Uh, no, thank you. Really, no. Oh. Mr. Excuse me. The clerk at the shipping office told me you bought and sold things. Well, now, that all depends. Jewelry, for instance. That depends, too. Will you look at that, please? Hmm. Pity it's in platinum. I like them gold and gaudy around these parts. So you want to sell it, eh? Whose is it? Mine, of course. Don't be angry, no offence. Anyone can't be too careful about jewellery. Besides, pretty girls trying to sell expensive diamond watches in a hotel bar in Singapore Tam isn't exactly usual. Well, I would have taken it to one of the big jewellers, but there are all Mohammedans and clothes Fridays. Well, why not wait till tomorrow? Because I must have the money this afternoon. Oh, why? Because I've paid the deposit on my fare home on the mail boat tomorrow. If I don't pay the balance today, then I forfeit the berth. See, I'm running away. Who from? Everything. My husband, this country, the blazing sun, everything. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it. Here. Have some of this. You'll feel better. And then tell me the rest of it. That'll make you feel better, too. It's safe with me, whatever it is. There's nothing more to it than that. We should never have married. Jim's a planter. We met in London during the war. Married, and then I came back here with him. Well, it's not worked out, that's all. I wrote to my mother and asked her somehow, anyhow, to find my fare. One of Jim's delightful little habits is to allow me no money at all. Well, she was to have sent it care of the post office. Just hasn't arrived, that's all. Where's your husband now? Up river, inspecting a new rubber stand. He gets back tomorrow. When he finds I'm gone, the only place for him to look for me is here. And I'm just not prepared to go through everything again. I begged him to let me go, but he won't. How much are you short of? Fifty pounds. Is that all? Oh, well, you don't want to sell and everything like that. Why not raise a loan on it? <laughs> I only wish I could. Fifty pounds, that's 400 million dollars. 
Here, I'll help you out. I'll lend you 500. It'll give you a bit of a margin. You can send it to me when you've got it. Mr. Slaughterly, you mean... Sure. You leave the watch with me, and I'll have my man of affairs draw up a piece of paper that makes the whole thing perfectly legal. Can you go? Mr. Slaughterly, I... I... Oh, forget it. You can't. Uh, yes, I want you to draw up two copies of the usual form of agreement. This young lady is temporarily short of ready cash. I've decided to give her a helping hand. You've what? I'm lending her 500 million dollars. She leaves with me her watch. And Ollingston, number 973221. Diamond set, 5% two months from date. Honey, give me 250 cent stamps, will you? And what will you do when you get back home? Find a job. I model gowns. Model them very nicely, I should say. Ah, now for the money. Uh, one, two, three, four, five hundred million dollars. Now, these bits of paper will make everything strictly legal. Uh, you sign across the stamp there, and then again here. That's right, and then I sign underneath. And Mr. Kager will witness our signatures. Come on, Kager. I really don't know what to say, Mr. Slaughterly. Why you should do all this for me, a perfect stranger? Oh, here you are, my dear. Well, thank you very, very much. Oh, nothing. We pass through this world but once. If one can do a kindness, we'll do it. That's what I say. There are very few who think or act like that, Mr. Slaughterly. You indeed. Now I must hurry to the shipping office. Uh, as soon as I get home, I'll write to you and eventually send you the money. Goodbye, Mr. K oh, by the way, hadn't you better have my address? Oh, that's not necessary, my dear, as long as you've got mine, and that's on the agreement. Now, you send me the money as soon as you get it, and I'll mail the watch on to you. Thank you again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Caker. Well, that is the curtain on act one of our play. And after a brief message from our sponsor, we will raise the curtain again on the surprising second half. Is it always as quiet as this around here? No, sir. Plenty of people come later on. Uh-huh. You stranger here, sir? Yeah, I'm catching the boat tomorrow. I see, sir. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Harry. Mr. Kager gone? Yes, he gone about half an hour ago, sir. Mm -hmm. Can I get you anything, sir? Well, um... Do you care to join me? Oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, the usual, Harry. Yes, sir. My name's Slaughterly. Yeah, mine's Holman. Chris Holman. How do you do? Glad to meet you. Just passing through, Mr. Holman? Yeah, I'm going on leave. Home? Well, that depends what you call home. Mine's in Sydney. Oh, Australian, eh? Yeah. It's a fine country. Yeah, you're telling me. I'd never leave it if it wasn't for the Oscar. The Oscar? Yeah. Oscar Ash. Cash. <laughs> Filthy lucre. Oh, but there's plenty of that in Australia. Or so they tell me. Well, there's more of it here. My line, anyway. What's that? Tin. I'm with the Bat Hat Company. What do you do? Dredging engineer. Uh-huh. They pay you boys plenty, don't they? Yeah, not bad. We earn it, mind you. Ah, mounts up nicely. I can just spin it on. All found. Free leave on full pay every three years. And then a glorious bust up in Sydney, eh? Well, not this time. Not Take for me, anyway. Lines, Barman, please. Yes, I'm, sir. Um, I'm going to get married. Congratulations. A bit soon for congratulations, I'm afraid. I haven't asked her yet. Oh, she'll have you. A fine young man like you. Well, I don't know so much about that. Uh, she's um, pretty high class, you know. I'm just a rough sort of a kid. Oh, nonsense. You're all right. <laughs> Faint heart never won fair lady. You know, Mr. Slaughter, you're cheering me up a lot. A little beauty, eh? Of course, you, you can't see the color of her hair and her eyes in this. No, but I can imagine them. Oh, you are lucky. You picked yourself a winner there. She's lovely. Yeah. This old little girl you'd want to smother with jewelry, eh? Yeah, you bet. You wait till you see the pearls that I'm taking her. You've been buying pearls? 
I will be tomorrow. I got a letter here to an old boy called Wang Fu. Huh? Ooh, you want to watch that old twister? <laughs> I know him. Why? Is he a crook? Skin his grandmother. Yeah? Well, better not start skinning me, that's all. Oh, he wouldn't try anything on with you. Still, pearls are tricky things, you know. What do you mean? What would I say? This place isn't right for pearls. The sea water and the sand, they just don't make good maker. You know, the pearls are always what we call in the business, slightly sick. All right to a layman's eye, no doubt, but you try selling them again. I don't want to sell them again. I just want to give them to my little girl. Oh, they'd be all right for her. She'd love them. <laughs> I was talking about the expert. Oh, experts? Look, do you think that I give crook pearls to my little girl? What do you think I am, eh? He wouldn't be crook. They just wouldn't be the best, that's all. I wouldn't have mentioned it, only I didn't want to see you gypped into paying top prices for second-grade stuff. Well, I mean to say, look, if I was to go and buy a load of tin without having a bloke like you around to advise me, I'd probably be caught for a mug, too. Everyone to his line, see what I mean? Yeah, sure, I see what you mean. I'm a mug, am I? Oh, no, don't take it that way, Chris. That's not what I meant at all. Oh, that's what you said. I didn't say anything of the sort. I said... What are we arguing about here? You said that if I went along to buy some pearls, I'd be had for a mug. Well, let me tell you, Mr. Noel Slot. Now, look. What's the point in spoiling a pleasant evening by having a silly argument over nothing at all? You go along to Wang Fu in the morning, you'll probably be very satisfied with what you get. Yeah, second-rate stuff. Not uh, necessarily. Well, stick to your argument. I'm not arguing on... Hey, come on, let's drop it. Here. Hey, Mendelssohn, give that blues thing you are playing a minute ago. Sure, sure. You know, look. If you know so much about this, you come along with me, huh? Not on your life. Ha. Ah, there you are. There's a pal for you. See a man Rob. Listen, Chris, if you want my advice and the benefit of my experience, it's yours for the asking. But for the reasons I told you, I don't touch pearls in this place. No? What do you touch? Oh, only the highest class stuff in the trade. Me, Fabergé, things like that. As a matter of fact, I've got a, a diamond watch collector's piece on me now. I've been ordered by the Rajah of Pima. Yeah? Well, show us. Oh, I'd rather not, if you don't mind, Chris. Not in this place. You'll never know who's watching. Uh, besides, it's ordered anyway. Well, let's have a look at it. That's not going to hurt you, is it? Oh, well. All right. Come over here. Don't anybody see you looking at it. And for the love of Allah, don't drop it. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of all right, isn't it? That's a little beauty. <laughs> How much is this? Oh, sorry, Chris. I never divulge what a client pays for an article. All right, then put it another way. How much do you want for it? Hey, you hand that back to me. Do you want to get me shot? That's promised to the Raja. Well, who's the Raja when he's at home? My money's as good as his, isn't it? Probably better, Chris. The Raja's a pretty slow payer. But uh, with all due respect, I think that little bit of nonsense is outside your price range. Outside my price range? Why, you... Here, I tell you what, you put up half a dozen like that and I'll buy the whole lot. My, you are touchy, Chris. I didn't mean you couldn't put the money up for it, for Pete's sake. What I meant was, well, the likes of you and me don't go spending $5,000. Yeah, I tell you what. 6000 Quit your belly ache. Chris, you're not serious. Of course I'm serious. Easy to see you don't know Chris Hellman. Oh, but my dear boy, you just don't do business like that. I mean, you, you'd want a valuation. And, well, I might be the biggest crook in town. <laughs> yeah. Harry, my bill. Well, let me tell you... Look here, started. I'm getting out of this before you really start something. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait. No, 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 no. Come on, what about the watch? Come on, give me... Look here, it's been a very nice evening, Chris. It's been grand meeting you. There's only yeah. too few of you chaps around nowadays. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Give me the watch. Come on, come on. Oh. Oh, you are a stickler, aren't you? <laughs> Trouble with you is you know what you want, mm. and you know what's good when you see it. Well, all right. But now, look, fair's fair. What if you change your mind? I won't be around in the morning to take it back. I'm going up country on business. No, don't worry. Never change my mind. All right. And there's another thing. You mustn't go flashing it around here. I do a lot of business with the Raja, you understand? Yeah, yeah sure, I understand. Now, look, Joe, you and me's pals, see? Yeah? And Chris Hellman never let a pal down in his life. You ask him up a protect. Now, it's a deal, boy, and you'll never regret it. Come on. No, I'm sure I won't, but... Mm. Well, I had to make sure that everything was all right, and after all, five, six... Six thousand dollars is a lot of money. Still, it's a deal. Yeah. 
<laughs> Glad to do you the favor, son, you and the little girl. You're all right, Joe. You're all right. You're a good bloke. Now for the Oscar, eh? Come on, come on. Hey, uh, Harry, Harry, you got a pen there? Yes, sir. Ah, thanks. Oh, boy. You wait till she sees that little lot on her wrist. Morning, Harry. Good morning, sir. Mr. Slaughter living in yet? No come yet, sir. Soda water, please. Soda water, yes, sir. Stay late last night? Yes, sir. Stay quite late. Here, another gentleman. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Morning. Morning. Morning, sir. You all right this morning, sir? Me? Yeah, sure. Let's have a uh, lime and soda, will you? Lime and soda, yes, sir. Plenty of soda. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, Harry. Look. I'm in a little bit of trouble. I've run out of money, see? Now, I've got a very good small watch. Cost a lot. I want to sell it. You know who'll buy and not talk about it all over the town? I've got to catch the boat for Bangkok this afternoon. I thought Master catch boat for Australia next Tuesday. No, I uh, changed my mind. You same watch Master buy last night? Uh, no, no, it's uh, one like it, though. How much Master want for watch? Quick sale. No questions, 3,000. There's a couple of hundred in for you. All right. Master wait here. I go telephone one friend. He work for Chinese jeweler. I think he fix all right. Uh, maybe he want a uh, hundred, two hundred dollar for himself. Now look, I want 2,750. Anything you make over that, you can split between you. Okay? Okay, I go telephone. Yes, speaking. Who's that? Who? Oh, Harry. Yes, well, what is it? What? Tried to sell it for 3,000? Are you sure? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm, sh I'm sure, sir. Yeah, well, now, look. Now, wait. Listen. You keep him talking there, understand? I'll come round in about 10 minutes. You keep him. All right. Hello? Exchange. Exchange. Uh, hello. Get me the police. And hurry. This is the man, Inspector. Arrest him. Arrest? What are you talking about? Why, you dirty crook. Call me a crook. All right, that's enough of that. Now, what are you charging this man with, Mr. Slotterley? False pretenses. Issuing a worthless check. Obtaining goods. All right, that's enough for a holding charge. Now you. What's your name? Holman. Chris Holman. Australian? Yeah. You say you're from the Batek Company. I haven't said anything yet. Anyway, you haven't cautioned me. Oh, know all the ropes, do you? You bet he knows all the ropes. Not the first time this lad's been arrested. And back at company, my foot. I've just telephoned them. They've never heard of him. All right, Holman. I'm arresting you on this gentleman's charge. Now, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to, but if you do, I'll take it down and he may be given an evidence. There's no court open on Saturday, and since the day is a public holiday with everything closed, I can't even put you before a magistrate in chambers. But I think I can arrange police bail till Monday if you can put up a substantial bond yourself and name two acceptable sureties. Well, how can I? I don't know a soul in this town. In that case, you'll have to go inside. I shall want that check, Mr. Slotterley. I shall also want your statement. All right. I'll come down to the station straight away. Come on, Helen. You're a good boy, Harry. If you hadn't telephoned me so quickly, that fella could have robbed me plenty. Here's ten dollars for yourself. Thank you, sir. A watch and a check. Mm. Uh, just the one case. Just the one, Your Worship. Case number. 1173, Christopher George Holman, British subject, Australian domicile, false pretenses. This is not a case which, in view of the large amount involved, would normally be dealt with in this court. You will therefore merely be asked to plead. The question of bail may be discussed, and His Worship will then probably remand the case to the colonial sessions, which will sit here on Wednesday. Are you legally represented? No, I am not. I don't think it's necessary yet. 
but I would like to ask the court a question. Well, you may at the proper time. Meanwhile, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Uh, the defendant pleads not guilty. Now, what is your question? I want to know why I've been charged with false pretenses. Uh, you have been charged on the complaint of Joseph Victor Slotterly Merchant of issuing a worthless check to the value of 6,000 million dollars. Yeah, sure, I gave him a check for $6,000, but why does he say it's worthless? Oh, because, uh, well, I sold him, a, sold him something for $6,000, and a few hours later he tries to sell the same article for three. Well, uh, I mean to say. That's not the point. I want to know whether my check has been presented and bounced. Oh, well, presumably, but... What? Well, uh, of course the check was phony, I'm being to say. Has it been presented? How the... How could it have been presented? The banks weren't open on Saturday. Your Worship, I respectfully ask for a stay of proceedings until my check has been presented. Well, as the bank's only next door, we can resolve this problem very quickly. Uh, Mr. Smith, would you mind? As Your Worship pleases. Three, four, five, six. Six thousand. Well, Mr. Slotterly? Wrongful imprisonment, defamation of character, would be very costly. Settle out of court, I think. Since the complainant appears a little unwell, uh, would you inform him the case is dismissed? Uh, without prejudice to the police taking what action they think fit for waste of time. Uh, uh, Mr. Holman. You, of course, uh, have the address open to you in due process of civil law. A fact that I imagine is abundantly clear to you. Am I free to go now? You are, and you may. It is customary to rise when his worship does, Mr. Slotterly. Case dismissed, court closed. Yes, but fifteen thousand dollars! Fifteen thousand! What kind of a lawyer do you call yourself? Ex-lawyer, my dear sir, but still conversant enough with my craft to know that it would have cost you at least 40,000 if you'd let it go to court. I have a local jury have got hold of you. Here's the other party again. I do beg you to restrain us. Hiya, boys. Hiya. Good morning. Good morning. Well, no hard feelings, I hope. Mistakes will happen. What's it to be, huh? My client isn't drinking just now. A little dyspepsia. Oh, gee, that's bad. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, you want to watch that, you know? Good heavens. Oh, Mr. Slaughterly. My dear young lady. Oh. Mr. Slaughterly, everything's all right. Mother's money arrived this morning. I missed the boat, but I'm booked on the next. Now I can repay your loan. But I'll never forget what you've done for me, a complete stranger. I have everything in here. Selling property before the expiry of a note, 18 months to three years, according to the state of the judge's liver. Oh, get it back, Robin, get it back. I'm afraid this means another blank check. Oh. My client has developed a certain interest in watches. And wants to buy one. 20,000. Make it 30. I get your point. OK. But keep him here for a bit until I've cashed it. I don't think he's quite straight. Regrettable, but true. I will. Your watch. Oh, thanks. One, two, three, four, five hundred. There you are. I'm not very good at arithmetic. What's five percent of that, Mr. Kager? Twenty-five dollars. Oh, fancy doing all that in your head. Yes, five twenty-five. There it is. Oh, and your little bit of paper. Hey, Chris, are you going to sit around all day guzzling when we've got a boat to catch? Come on, ducks. Bye, boys.
you able to guess the end? Will you be back with us again next time we come your way? I hope so, because we have another fine play for you. Until then, good night and thank you.